Welcome back. One of the first topics in biochemistry and analytical chemistry is acid-base chemistry. And one of the things that we can do with things that are weak acids and weak bases is we can do something called titrations. Okay? And like most things in chemistry, we can make a graph out of it. Okay? What we're going to focus on is if we start with a weak acid and we add to it strong base, we're going to get the weak acid's conjugate base out of it. And the general equation showing this is at the top boxed in red. The weak acid is shown by HA. H is the dissociable proton. N is the charge on this. It could be zero, but it doesn't have to be. It could have any charge. And if it's a monoprotic weak acid, we throw in some strong base, and the proton is removed, and we end up with A. And whatever the charge is on the weak acid N, the charge when we remove the proton is going to be N minus 1. Okay? So an example of that we can come down here and look at an example. I could potentially titrate acetic acid, and I'm going to titrate it with sodium hydroxide, which is our strong base. So the hydroxide is the participating species. The hydroxide is going to remove this proton. We can even do this. And what I'm going to end up with is acetate. So in this case, the weak acid would be acetic acid. This hydrogen right here, the one that's dissociable, is this one. And notice that the charge here is zero overall. This species is acetate. It's, it's, it's gotten its hydrogen removed. It's now part of hydroxide making water. But the charge has to be reduced by one, so zero minus one is minus one. Okay? So this is, in general, what we're talking about. So in this video, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about titration of a monoprotic weak acid. Monoprotic just means it has one dissociable proton. If it was diprotic, there'd be two dissociable protons. Triprotic, three dissociable protons, and so forth. So there's lots of ways to analyze a titration curve once you have it. And that if it's monoprotic, it's going to have a form that sort of looks like this. What we're going to do in this video is look at a very analytical approach, um, the theory behind it, of how you would analyze where the pKa is. Okay, where is the pKa of the um, of where is the pKa of this weak acid? All right. Now, a lot of you at this point, if you're taking biochemistry or analytical, you could, if I hadn't even indicated where the pKa was, you could potentially look at this titration curve and probably spot where it is. If, you had to, if, if I, say, did not have this dotted line in the point indicating where the pKa is, how in words would you describe, just words, would you describe where the pKa of this weak acid is? Well, you would probably say it's where the slope is the smallest. The slope is the smallest. And if you're just looking at this, it looks like approximately here the slope is the smallest. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is go over the theory about how you locate where that pKa is, where the slope is smallest. In the next video, we're actually going to look at some Excel data, and we're actually going to mathematically with Excel determine where the pKa is for a weak acid during a titration. Um, when we do, when we have diprotic and triprotic acids. We're going to do exactly the same thing, except we're going to have to break that titration curve into different regions. But we're going to do this for each of those regions. It's the same thing. All right. So what is this? So we have this titration curve. Let's make an identity. So I want to say that the pKa of this weak acid is wherever the slope is the smallest. Well, I have a graph of pH versus molar equivalence of hydroxide. I'm going to refer to the molar equivalence as M sub EQ, molar equivalence, okay? Just so we're clear on that. And it's of hydroxide because I'm titrating a weak acid, okay? So if I want this, this, if I want this to be where the slope is the lowest, then that's essentially this first point right here, okay? All right, I want the slope of a pH versus molar equivalence graph to be a minimum, okay? That means in derivative form, dPH 
over dmeq has to be a minimum. All right, if I think about what a slope is, all right, if I was to look at, say, several points, let me pick some points. Let me pick this point. Let me pick this point. Then let me also pick, say, this point. I want to look at the slopes of each of those points. So right here, the slope of there is approximately that. Remember, the derivative is just the slope of a tangent line at that point, and we're treating the titration curve as if it is a function, right? At this point, the blue point, the slope is approximately like that. So at the yellow and blue slopes are pretty steep. I'm going to do the pink one now. This one is going to look something like that, so it's getting shallower. But when I get to this one right here, I notice that the slope is the shallowest. So what that means, because the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at a point on a function, is that when the derivative of pH with respect to molar equivalence is minimized, when it's the shallowest, that by definition for a local region of a titration curve, which is just one titration, that is the pKa. So what we're saying is at the pKa, the slope of a pH versus molar equivalent graph is minimized. In other words, at the pKa, the derivative of pH with respect to molar equivalence is a minimum. All right, that's the mathematical definition, or at least it's one. All right. Now, there's also another um, qual there's another quantification that we're gonna we're gonna look at also. Okay, and this one probably will not make as much sense until we look at the next video whenever we do the uh, Excel data, and that's when we look at the second derivative. Okay, when the second derivative of pH with respect to molar equivalence is zero. That's also at the pKa. Why is it that the second derivative of pH with respect to molar equivalence is zero at the pKa? Well, if I just look at this graph, notice something. If I were to sort of look at the right side of this graph, and I were to sort of, let me think about it like this, continue this curve as if it was about to go up like this, right? I have a parabola essentially that's going, it's opening up, do this in, in green. If I look at the left side now is to continue this parabola, it's a parabola opening down. In other words, what's happening is I'm changing concavity at the pKa, meaning the pKa mathematically is an inflection point. If you're looking at this mathematically, what you're saying is that at the pKa, you're hitting an inflection point. Okay, inflection point. What's happening is you're switching from concave down to concave up. Okay, so the pKa is an inflection point, and by definition for any function, an inflection point is where the deriv second derivative of, of the vertical with respect to the horizontal is zero. In this case, the second derivative of pH with respect to molar equivalence is zero. So all that being said, to summarize, at the pKa, there are two conditions satisfied. Change in pH with respect to molar equivalence, the first derivative is a minimum. The slope will not necessarily be zero, but it'll be a minimum and then in that region. And then the second derivative of pH with respect to molar equivalence is zero because the pKa is an inflection point. So at the pKa, we have a minimum slope and we have an inflection point. Now, it's very difficult to compute these derivatives exactly because when you do a titration curve, and perhaps you've already done it in lab and now you're trying to analyze it, you don't actually have a function. You have points that could potentially make a function, but you don't actually have an equation. So how can you take derivatives, first and second derivatives, if you don't have a function? Well, what we're gonna do in the next video is look at a set of Excel data and we're actually going to figure out how you would calculate these derivatives, or at least approximate them, to where you should be able to tell where the first derivative is a minimum and the second derivative is approximately zero. Unfortunately, because we don't actually have a function, because we have points, we won't actually get, most likely, a second derivative anywhere that's exactly zero, but we're going to get something, hopefully, if the titration curve is good, something where it's almost zero, 
but it won't probably be zero. It'll be minimized, essentially. Okay, so mathematically these are both true, but in practice when we do the titration curve and analyze it, technically we're going to say the second derivative is also a minimum. It's probably going to be very, very small. Okay, so hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. In the next video we're going to apply this and look at some actual real data. Join us in that video. Thank you very much.